In this video, we're going to calculate an estimate for the temperature on our moon when the, moon, when the sun is overhead. Uh, perhaps you have the experience of uh, taking some object from inside a house in the summer and taking it to the outside, setting it in sunlight, and later you pick it up and you notice it's warmer. Uh, this is a more complicated situation on Earth than on the moon because we have various uh, mechanisms where energy can be delivered to that object, uh, not just sunlight, but this is uh, worth calculating on the moon. How, how hot does it get on the moon? So our mechanism here will be to make use of uh, this relationship for black bodies that the power emitted by a black body is equal to Stefan's constant times area times temperature to the fourth power. And consider the um, solar constant, the amount of uh, power available in sunlight per square meter at the distance of the Earth. <coughs> and on the moon, if I would draw this just a little bit here, there's some Maria, and we have sunlight coming in, and we're just going to consider one square meter that's directly underneath the sun. The sun is overhead. Um, and consider that energy is going to come in to this area. And also, energy is going to be radiated out from this area. We're going to treat the surface of the moon as a black body. And we're going to consider how much energy is absorbed and balance that with the energy being emitted. If there was more energy being absorbed than emitted, the square meter would be receiving more energy than it's giving off, and its temperature would go up. Now, eventually, we reach the temperature where the uh, one square meter emits energy per second, matching the absorbed energy per second. So. The sunlight that comes in, the moon is not going to receive 1368 watts per square meter because some of the sunlight bounces off of the moon. It reflects. And uh, the source at NASA says that about 11% of the incoming light does not get absorbed. It's, uh, it's bouncing off. So I want to do energy absorbed equal energy emitted and per second if you wish and make it power but um, it's fine to think about energy energy being absorbed energy being emitted so in terms of in, if let's say we do this for one second of time then this uh, watt is a joule per second so if we do this just for one second then we'll have joules per square meter but what gets absorbed? Well, we have available 1368 in terms of the watts per square meter. And you can use joules here if you wish. But not all of that gets absorbed. There's 11% that gets reflected. So this is our calculation for how much energy gets absorbed. It's the part that's not reflected. And the energy that's emitted uh, per second. If you want to change watts to uh, the um, the joules, just consider this for one second. So we have 5.67. Oh, I I left off something else. 10 to the minus 8 watts per meter squared, Kelvin to the fourth. And I want to do this for one square meter and temperature to the fourth power here. Uh, but what I wanted to do was multiply by the one square meter on both sides. Uh, so this is watts per square meter coming in. I'm going to just take a one square meter area and the meter squared will cancel off. And same thing happens over here in the area for our black body formula. I'm going to use one square meter and the meter squared will cancel off. So Basically, we've got energy absorbed in this one square meter per second, the watts, equals over here energy emitted in the one square meter per second, uh, the watt number again. Temperature is going to be in Kelvin. So we'll get a fourth power of Kelvin that will cancel the units of Kelvin to the fourth power in our constant. 
So you should pull out your calculator and pause a little bit and do a little bit of work here. I'm going to first uh, find out what is the number for t to the fourth. So this is going to be 0 0.89 times the 1368 divide by Stefan's constant and we'll have t to the fourth. So you should uh, double check my work. So pause the video. Welcome back. So we have 2.147 times 10 to the 10th is our Kelvin to the fourth power. And now if you don't have the capability for doing an arbitrary root on your calculator, just take the square root twice. We want fourth root of both sides, but take the square root twice and that will accomplish what you need to do. So just indicate it here, take the square root twice. And I came up with 383 Kelvin for the temperature. Uh, directly beneath the sun on the surface. If we convert this to Celsius, I have to subtract 273 to get the Celsius number. So I get 110 degrees Celsius. And if I want to convert that into Fahrenheit, to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit, we have to multiply by 9 fifths. And after we do that, we have to add 32. So multiplying by the 9 fifths will get the Celsius number on the same sized interval of temperature as Fahrenheit. And then 0 Celsius is where ice freezes, water freezes, ice melts. But uh, it's 32 on the Fahrenheit scale. So I ha we have to do a little shifting of the 30, adding 32 degrees. So again, you should do this on your calculator. 110 times 9 divided by 5. Get that result and then add 32, and I came up with 230 degrees Fahrenheit. Hot enough to boil what substance? To boil water, as water is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and you should have realized that back here if I would have asked it back here, but uh, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So there's our temperature uh, this is an estimate. There could be some other factors going on if our container uh, doesn't uh, absorb uh, that we're trying to boil water in. If our container doesn't uh, reflect exactly 11%, then this changes. Uh, depends if the moon is a little closer than the Earth. You know, is it the phase of new moon or is it the phase of full moon? Uh, all the time doing the place on the moon where the sun is directly overhead. Um, and that changes with phase of the moon. But nevertheless, an estimate, an estimate here. So using the uh, black body formula, accounting for how much energy does not get absorbed, taking the solar constant at the Earth and just letting 89% uh, be received and absorbed on the moon. And then to reach an equilibrium temperature, the energy that's absorbed has to equal the energy that's emitted. We use that to calculate uh, around 110 degrees Celsius or 230 degrees Fahrenheit at the point on the moon that is directly underneath the sun, the sun overhead. So if you have questions on that, uh, ask your instructor, keep reading your book. If you do have other physics and astronomy questions that you think YouTube videos might be helpful, um, my physics videos are listed and annotated at physics.gpclements.com and the astronomy videos at astronomy.gpclements.com.